So we have GoPro number one as a Hero 4 session. It's in there mounted with the tape flat mount and a little adapter to give it a little extra edge, a little neck so it can kind of go up and aim when we want it to aim down a little bit when it's up there. So we've got that one going and then next goes in the Hero 4 Black with an extra battery pack. This is going to be our main camera. Yeah. All right, Brandon's gonna give the countdown. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Let go! Oh boy! We'll head straight there. Okay, stop going that direction. We're gonna spread out later. So let's go straight to the point. They may have found it. They may have found it. But now we have to run across the desert after two weeks. But well, here we go. We're actually there. Yeah. Oh. We made it. Oh, third time's the charm. Yeah. I'll take, I'll take this one and pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did it. It's here. And all it took was eight tries, 4,000 miles, and $400. <sighs> it is mostly black. We were looking for a red object, and the oh. bottom of this thing is mostly black. Oh, my gosh. Hold on, before this <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cue emotional Oscar winning music. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh gosh. It's so awesome.
All right. Camera, focus on me now. Love it. Works great with my setup. Okay, awesome. Thomas is saying that he loved his V bracket, and he's got it. So we are about seven minutes from going live. This time, this uh, countdown right here is not totally accurate. Let's see. Let's throw in a this time countdown. It's closer. <laughs> I got a six minute one that I'll start in one minute. Let's just do that. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Ra, da, 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 da. It's, we're back. We're back, baby. And we're live for two weeks straight, three weeks straight. Oh, how many of these do I turn on now? I have so many. And my six minute one. Oh, there it is. The six minute one is way up here. And it's actually not started yet because it's not time. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Hey, Rhonda's here. Welcome in, Rhonda. Hanging out with Kathy and Thomas so far. At least those are the vocal ones that are hanging out right now. I don't see anyone else that's in here. But it sounds like you are all hearing me. Commander Riker, the monkey man. Hey, Aaron, finally made it to a stream. Welcome in, the R Riker. Sounds like my audio is doing plenty of volume. Let me know if you guys think otherwise. But uh, I'm glad Riker's here. We've got to play some games, Riker. we got to do it. Um, looking in on the pages. Oh, yeah, I wanted to get this countdown going. And it's right. It's now. Boom. And let's go ahead and put that in there because we're coming up in six minutes. We're live in six minutes. Looks like, oh, good. Those are all done. I realized at the last minute that I hadn't loaded my clips. Have I ever done that before? Yeah, pretty much every Milky Way Wednesday I neglect to, you know, remember that I'm doing my clips. So let me just go ahead and do that right now. Argus is here. Welcome in. Becoming a bearded wonder. Well, if it's a wonder, maybe I should keep it. This is, I've been on the road since June 20th face. And so since I haven't been anywhere else, you know, uh, haven't been near the razor, I have not used it. And uh, I think it was a wise choice to keep it on because it's a little bit warm right now. And it helps me look from being, help me not look so uh, sticky. Hey, Blake is here too. Hey, Blake, I didn't say hi to you, man. Uh, sounds good. Thomas says, sweet. Audio is good. Bill says it's good. Oh, that's right. I forgot to say Bill. I saw that Bill was on here. I already talked to him in the chat. Uh, da, 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 my downloaded video starting off with the Know the Milky Way Better video. All right. And then clip two is going to be my two minute tip on. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I was doing location next. Okay, location planning. Kablamo is based off of dark sky specifically location planning. And then clip three, we are going to go over uh, the clouds first or the moon? The moon first. Blasted moon. I hate the moon, but also love it. It's so gorgeous, and yet I hate it so, so dearly. Um, was that a dollar sign or an S? And let's see, location, no, uh, danged clouds. Get the clouds out of the way. That's what we're doing next. Okay, cool. I've got my clips in working order. All right, and I can turn this off. All right, curious. Did you and Kathy stay at the same place in the Pharaohs that we were at? No, we did not stay in Villarreal. We stayed in Funinger. Villarreal. We were in Funinger, and we drove up to Villarreal twice. I wish we could have gotten there more, but it's so far away, and it was great having a chance to be up there at Villarreal. Yes, we should. The real question is when. I know, Riker. Riker, it's like it's up to me to invite you, and I've got to. Um, hmm, we'll figure this out. Um, let's see. So while we're not live yet, and I've got three minutes, I suppose taking us away from Faroe, taking us away from Milky Way stuff, and talking Faroe Islands is no big, no big sin. Justin's here. Hey, Aaron, the batch of raw images are headed your way. Sweet. Okay, cool. I'll look for them. Did you send them to Milky Way Wednesday at gmail.com or send them to me at Aaron at photogadventures.com? Justin. So we stayed in Funinger, and you might remember Funinger, Rhonda, because it was on the way to Jake and going through a nice fjord area. It's one that has a beautiful drive right on the edge of the water. And in our first group, myself, Mark, Daryl, and Fred, 
we got a flat tire about four minutes driving from home. It sucked at midnight. And so the next day we had to get a whole new vehicle. And that went pretty well getting the new vehicle, actually. Um, they came all the way, found out that we were actually out of battery, too. So they had to jump the car. So we had a few more steps to fix it before we got switched out with the new vehicle. But the Faroe Islands were amazing. Um, those of you who want to hang on after I do all of the Milky Way stuff, I'll talk a little Faroe Islands and share some stuff. Uh, I am going to try and connect to my iPad, and since I have two minutes still, I should make sure that I am connected. Let's see, reflector, let's get you turned on, and let's make sure that you are seeing it. Which one? Okay, you're on Photog Adventures. Good. First step done. Check if I can mirror. Is my computer showing up? Desktop, yes. Okay. Sweet. I saw you on Alan's channel. He is great. Yeah, Alan is awesome. Uh, we had a very tiring few extra days after the Crater Lake workshop. More so for me tiring than him, I imagine, but he was also dealing with jet lag coming from Wales. So we both had our tired challenges. I uh, was exhausted after one whole week of the Crater Lake and Oregon Coast workshop, and then it became another week with Alan and our group. And from there, we left, and instead of coming straight home, knowing that I'm leaving to Faroe Islands, Alan and I traveled to Shasta, um, Olmstead Point, and then Mono Lake, and then we drove home. And I made it home about the 5th, and I left on the 7th for Faroe Islands, so crazy exhausted. All right, I think my countdown's over. We're almost done. Woo We're going to get live in a minute, so get your last chance for a bathroom break. I don't think I'm going to need these glasses today, so why don't I just put them over here, push my keyboard up out of the way, and get ready to hear my audio of my videos, because today we're going to go through some beginner newbie stuff that many of you already know, but it'll be a fantastic reminder on top of that. It will also be an opportunity for me to coast into being back live and not having too much stress tonight as <laughs> I came back from the Pharaohs and then two days later left for a four-night workshop. And then that four-night workshop, we actually lost the last night because of weather. So I had one extra day home since I have um, had to go live. So we're good. I just need to do some more chores around the place here. But otherwise, I feel solid. Kathy, I've got still Kathy. Uh, candy from the uh, duty free place that I'm trying not to eat all of but that Toblerone is calling my name you like the shirt yeah I found this when I was stuck in uh, Klamath Falls waiting for the next workshop to start and I couldn't resist when I saw this Oppa shirt I am a sucker hey Phil's here and Phil's here that marks the zero second mark let's get rolling it's time for Milky Way Wednesday Ooh, we welcome in. It's Wednesday night, and I'm back live, and I wasn't gone again this Wednesday night. We are doing Milky Way Wednesday. Welcome in, everybody. And if you're new here, my name is this, Aaron King. I'm Photog Adventures, and I am loving teaching Milky Way photography in a classroom format here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And today we are going to be like we're in a class as I jump around. Doug's here. Yes. Hey, Doug. Um, I don't know if I've confirmed with you, but I've definitely moved our workshop back a night. So you're not missing a single night. You and me are going out for four nights for sure. And uh, hopefully anyone else joins. Yeah, the puffin. Yes, Kathy, I've got it. In fact, I'm going to go show it to you right now. Everyone think about what you've done. And by what you've done, I mean what images you went out and captured. Here is the puff in Kathy. And it was only, what is that, 119 krona. So this is the puff in present that Kathy's giving her god niece, goddaughter. And so, hey, Old Man Exploration says, great to have you back. Thank you so much. Let's get the cam chat up here so I can see some of your comments over there. Whew, I just ran. Shouldn't be a little winded. I mean, I'm only a barely winded, but I shouldn't be that winded. I guess uh, shirt's a little tight. So hopefully you've been out and had some fun this summer. I know that I've heard from some of you that you had cloudy, cloudy nights and finally had an opportunity where you could actually hear. 
Uh, I hope you're not hearing this audio in this. I can hear it constantly, but I'm hoping that it's not coming through the mic too much. <sighs> a little late, but here. Jerry, you're not late at all because I haven't played the first clip. In fact, we should just get rolling. It's, oh man, I'm doing way better than normal. Just two minutes in. Two minutes in since we've gone live, and I haven't been jibber-jabbering too, too much. Who have I missed in the chat? Send hi. Okay, all right. Again, chat, if you have any questions for me, you want to interject, make sure you do an all caps comment. So over here, I see all caps and go, yes, yes, okay, you have a question? Let's tackle it right now. Tonight's format is going to be me playing a two-minute tip that I taught an element of beginner's Milky Way photography. And then afterwards, I'll expand on that two-minute clip. Uh, do you want to be paid in Corona? <laughs> Kathy, no, I do not want to be paid in Danish Corona. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what you should pay me though, but don't worry, we'll see in September, we'll figure this out. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -bum. So, you'll watch the clip with me, then I'll comment and expand upon what I say in quickly two minutes. Hey, Dave's here, how's it going? Doing well, I'm back, and like I was telling those who were here earlier, I'm back for three weeks, the third, the 10th, and the 17th, and then I'm gone again for a week, but we'll tackle that when that comes. And Lots of construction outside, and hopefully it's not going to be too loud. I think you're not hearing any of it. But let's get into the first clip and talk about the basics of Milky Way knowledge, and we'll expand on it here in a moment. Oh, that is tiny. That is going to not when work. When is it possible to see the Milky Way? First thing I want to highlight is that the Milky Way is always up. It's never not going to show up in the night sky. It's a bit of a misrepresentation when people like myself say, oh, the Milky Way is going to okay. be up at 7 o'clock. Awesome. Turning we can see off. it. We're really talking about the galactic core of the Milky Way. When that is above the horizon, that's when Milky Way photographers go out. You're going to see this icon in the bottom right. And this icon is the Milky Way representation as it moves through the night sky. Over here, check out what these rings are. These rings are representing the Milky Way going across the celestial sphere. So when you're seeing these dots go along in that line and then sometimes have a curve, sometimes be perfectly straight, that's representative of the Milky Way band going across the horizon and how high up it goes in the night sky. And then where the Milky Way core is, you see this special one line right here. You see this one big fat white line that's going right right through the core of the Milky Way. And when you see that, you can know where the core of the Milky Way is instantly. Southern Hemisphere, I'm very, 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 very jealous of. January through April, the Milky Way is vertical, but it's also rising. So through January to April, that thing's already vertical and then going higher up in the sky before Astro Twilight begins. So your only chance is a vertical shot. But then the rest of the year, from May all the way through the end of November, that Milky Way starts up high in the sky and then goes down and sets. So you have a panorama opportunity all the way from May through November, and as November is very short of a time scale, you still have a chance for Milky Way panorama. Very, very, very jealous of the Southern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere, our opportunity for panorama starts at the beginning of the year and goes all the way through June. During July and August, our Milky Way is vertical. September through November, that Milky Way that was vertical is now tipped and then setting. And then after that, you're just capturing the rest of the Milky Way band which is awesome, unless you're an elitist like me. Man, two minutes is not enough to explain everything about the Milky Way, but I hope that you gathered everything that you need to know. Man, I could go out and do Milky Way all the time. Practically, yes. In the video tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the moon, and so you understand which nights are better than the other nights. So guys, thanks again for watching. Hit this like button. Hit this subscribe button, please. Let me know that you're enjoying these videos. And if you haven't already, go to yesterday's video about composition and get your tip sheet that goes along with it by going to MilkyWayPhotographers.com. MilkyWayPhotographers.com. Okay, okay, okay. It's Dawn. That is good enough. Let's go over to the iPad screen. This is us live right now but I am gonna go back and forth between my iPad as well as, yes, audio is working, double check that, and the clips that I just showed you. So let's look at one of the clips that we were just watching and talk about it from each of the golden tips. So the Milky Way is always up. 
that key element is something that might come as a surprise to a very beginner to the Milky Way because they hear things like Milky Way season. When is it good to have Milky Way season? And when should I go out? Because when is the Milky Way out? And that is a misnomer that people like me, as Alan Wallace showed off in his video, if you haven't seen it yet, go to Alan Wallace's uh, YouTube channel. And let's see, YouTube video sharing company. Interesting. Uh, I've never seen it that way. Why don't you just go straight to YouTube? Okay. Alan Wallace. So I feature in his recent video out at Mono Lake. And this Mono Lake one is how to not get over your Milky Way addiction. And this one, I'm in it. You can see me hanging out with him, wandering around with my fat self. Saying, hmm, I want this shot or that shot. And he's trying to keep me from focusing too much on the, um, let's see, here's my fat self right there. Huh, look at that. Mm, maybe this direction. So why am I holding my phone like that? Because I was actually having to look for an asterism of the Vega, Deneb, and Altair, as well as working with the constellation of the um, Cygnus constellation to get my favorite, favorite star, Alberio. So check out that video on Alan's channel if you haven't watched it already. I feature on that because I'm quite the Milky Way core junkie. And the reality is, oh, you know what? This is still loud, and it's because I have my audio on here. Quiet, Darren. There we go. That'll be much easier for me to focus without hearing myself in the background. So Milky Way is always up is because every single star in the night sky is the Milky Way. On top of that, the band, the actual band of the Milky Way is always available, as you've seen with those with nice astro modified cameras or using cameras that have a star tracker attached you can see a lot of detail in the northern milky way during december and in fact there's a guy over on the milky way photographers guild chris who's always encouraging us and everyone in the guild to go out during that um christmas milky way and to, he got a panorama that's a good example let me just go ahead and move this over here and fill the page a little bit better and then go in. Tim Farmer's question. I need to, I need to get responding on these. Let's see. Uh, I probably shouldn't scroll this way because it'll take too long. Uh, Chris, Whiting or Woodruff? It was Whiting. No, it was Woodruff. It was Woodruff. And let's see his pictures. Let's see his activity. Because he has lots of great images. Uh, his activity is prolific. So maybe this is going to be a bad idea. But scrolling down. Oh, no, I clicked. Don't click. Keep letting it roll. All right. Oh, there's a good, ah, that's a full core, actually. Um, ba bump, ba bump, bump, bump. Looking through all of Chris's pictures so I can show you one of his December winter Milky Way skies. And uh, brum, ba -bum. <laughs> maybe I should do this during the next clip. But the next clip is not what I want to show you yet. We need to go over all the basics real quick. So you just have to deal with me live scrolling and scrolling. Man, Chris, awesome pictures. Maybe I should have done it a different way. Um... It's like showing everything on top of his pictures and his original posts. It's showing his comments and others' posts. That's such a good picture. I think that was it was Hudson. I love it. I love it so much. It's such good texture, Hudson. He's found such great texture in Death Valley, and I'm really jealous of him. Okay, here's a good example. This right here is a winter Milky Way. So when's the Milky Way season? Year-round. Absolutely, bottom line, year round. Well, when in the month is the Milky Way up? Every dang night. And the moon just gets in the way. We'll talk about that here later tonight. And so when you're looking at the Milky Way, often people are thinking Milky Way, but in truth, we're always mentioning the Milky Way core. Let's just enjoy this for a little bit longer. Great texture in Badlands. It doesn't have quite the same texture that Hudson was getting. Hudson had a great night but look at the detail he pulled in this astro modified tracked pano of the milky way still doing an arch in this time of year and chris when did you do it he did this one around um ba -bum, ba -bum, bum, bum, scroll 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 he says this was oh he told us about it on march 10th but when did he go by the end of the month will be after sunset um Oh, I don't know if he went in February or March, but he went around that time. It's a winter Milky Way, and it took him 24 images, three rows, eight images, uh, eight 
times eight, three rows times eight. So there's eight images on each row, focus stacked, the foreground, and on the sky, he has two rows. Oh, I see, he has three rows in the foreground, but in the sky, he only had two. Awesome, okay, that was just a little information on his stuff. So the Milky Way is always up, newbies. That's where the bottom line is. And let's go forward in the previous next part of the tip. Ah, that southern hemisphere was so gorgeous. Oh, it just went so fast. I think I missed, that's why. So the next tip was that I'm biased towards the core. I already mentioned it. In fact, this is a time lapse in Death Valley showing the Milky Way core rise above and also showing you how in photo pills there's this art asset. Um, if you're not familiar with that, let me just remind you real quick. So let me go into my photo pills and you can see it down here. And when you go in that time of year, you can see what's going on and how the Milky Way moves during that night time. And you can see, oh, okay, what's the Milky Way going to be vertical? Is it vertical? No, it's got a 45, a nice angle to it. So this is Milky Way basics, that one, all year long, you can see the Milky Way. When you want to see the Milky Way core, there are specific months, and that includes every month but December. And then the Northern Hemisphere versus the Southern Hemisphere. The Southern Hemisphere has a great vertical Milky Way above your head that then actually sets towards May through November. And every night they can get a panorama right up until the end of the season. So, so, so jealous of every one of you in the Southern Hemisphere. I think with all of us here, we know this stuff pretty well. So let's go on to clip number two, talking about, um, is this the moon? No, it's location. It's location stuff. Let's do that. And I probably will have to change the size of the image again. Let's just see how the video goes. Yep, there it is. Got to change the size of it. Location planning. There are really only two considerations that you should be making when here. choosing your location for Milky Way. One, your foreground. Using the composition tips that I gave you in the previous video, this one, you guys can see, and right here is the link, you guys can see that actually you blah, 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 blah. Want to see me? Use the video linked right here to go see my composition tips. Otherwise, once you've decided on a cool foreground, the other consideration is number two and most important, honestly, light pollution. You want the darkest sky possible. And so my favorite tool is lightpollutionmap.info. Lightpollutionmap.info is fantastic for showing you pretty up-to-date blooms of light. If you're lucky enough like me to live in the west coast, the west side of the United States, then you're sitting here working around islands of light pockets. You've got light blooms that you have to work around in little city areas that are going to cause blooms of light in your image. And so you want to make sure that your foreground and the light pollution play nice together, or if you're lucky enough, completely eradicate light pollution if at all possible. I have a video right here that you can click on right there that breaks down all my light pollution avoidance philosophies, and you can go into detail there. But one thing I want to emphasize is that depending on where you're standing near that light pollution bloom, you can mitigate it. Even if you have some light pollution in the distance, if you're further away, you pull that light pollution bloom down to the lower part of your frame, and so where it blooms up, it's not messing with the core. And check out this, you can even have fun with the light pollution bloom and it doesn't ruin your shot. So you don't always have to avoid light pollution like it's a plague, but if you can get it off of your Milky Way core, success. That's all you really need to worry about. If it's below the core, you won't care. The last thing, I do not use filters. I am lucky enough to go to locations that are dark enough that I don't care about a little bit of filter blocking a little bit of light pollution if I even have any. So find a great foreground in a dark sky location by checking lightpollutionmap.info and you've got a great spot for Milky Way. Next thing to consider is the clouds. Are the clouds gonna be in all the right, way? All right, let's, let's go back over here to us and great. Okay, so. Here we are. Oh, I missed someone from Peru. Hey, Faster, are you here? Uh, I saw a Peru comment. <gasps> yep, hello, Aaron. Faster from Peru. Welcome in, per welcome in Faster. And uh, yeah, Justin, that is the video. <laughs> so first off, my daughter, looking cute, coming into the middle of recording. I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm recording right now. And uh, this is the first tip, is that you already know. What you're choosing is the best foreground. You want to work with the Milky Way in an interesting way and not just find a dark sky site. And I mentioned a website. Let's go to it right now. If you haven't gone there, if this is maybe your first time seeing it, let's go for it. And it is lightpollutionmap.info. And I have paid to remove the ads, so hopefully it's not going to be on here. <gasps> okay, so far so good. Not seeing any ads load. So 
I am in the middle of New Mexico. Cool. It remembers where I'm at. So as I mentioned, the light pollution map. You got to choose these locations wisely. Oh, I have ads. Come on. I thought I destroyed these. Okay, let's go ahead and throw... Oh, what did I do to get rid of it last time? I think what I did... Oh well, oh well, just forget about it. As you look at this whole area of the world, yeah, you don't want to live over here if you want to see the Milky Way. Sorry, all of you who are right now in the East Coast. This is where you want to be. You want islands of light to avoid, not these rare islands of dark that you have to travel to. In fact, I have someone talking to me right now who would like to take a family member out to Maine or maybe even Pennsylvania or New York to get a chance to get away from light pollution. And they're curious if I can help them pick a good spot so that they can see the Milky Way. And as I was talking about these locations, I was talking about how you want to get in here and deal with it. Let's say we do this location right here. Uh, where is that? That is somewhere in Pennsylvania. Oh, is that the Allegheny? No, it's not Allegheny. Allegheny's were down south, right? Oh, well, I can't remember where this location is, but as you look, oh, can I actually see? Uh, the Hammersley Wild Area, obviously nice and dark. And when you're dealing with, I did already pay you. Why are you doing this to me? Maybe it's on a different account. Hmm. So this space, all of it, can give you a dark sky. So now you got to figure out where in here do you have a foreground subject. It's a two-minute tip, and today I won't go into it deeply. If you guys want to have more of the location advice that I've mentioned already, just hit me up in the email at MilkyWayPhotographersGuild.com. I'll show you. And not MilkyWayPhotographersGuild.com. I want you to go in here to Milky Way Wednesday at gmail.com. Email me there and say, Aaron, I would definitely love an hour presentation on how to find a location like this because you got several things to consider and how can I do it best? Would love to go through with that. But just as you know your area around your home, look in the light pollution map. Well, first think of a foreground subject that you think is interesting and then check and see how bad the light pollution is. And if you can look at it and see it's, you know, it's not going to be that great, but what if it was was something like this and you live in Maysville and or in Lexington and you want to go up here between Maysville you can go to any one of these locations but you need to consider one major thing are we dealing with the Milky Way in the south in the southeast or in the southwest as was in the beginning of this video the understanding the Milky Way I didn't go into it in the two-minute tip but you an eye here in the northern hemisphere can look at it this way in the beginning of the season, it's east and southeast. Uh, it, meaning the galactic core, is in the southeast and east. At the middle of the year, like right now in the summer, it's south, south of us. And then as it goes towards the fall and almost ends, we're looking at a southwest Milky Way as the Milky Way sets on the horizon. So when you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go in May, then I can deal with this area really well and look this way. Or I can even deal with this, but it's a little bit tighter. What am I saying? It's tighter. This gap between here and this light pollution bloom here is going to cause how much light pollution in your frame to be. And the further back you go from that light pollution bloom of, say, Grayson and Moorhead, you're going to be further away. You're going to push that light pollution down lower on your frame and out of the way of your composition, like as you saw in my one picture. In fact, is there any chance that Aaron King can navigate to that quickly? Aha, uh -huh. for once, he did it quickly. Of course, he didn't show it to you. This. This is Brendan and I out on salt flats with the puddle of water that was brilliant. And that is the light of Salt Lake City. Very, very, very bright. But being in this distance, we brought that bloom down to be completely out of the way of the core. Let's look at the light pollution map info in that area. So that's over at the salt flats, which is, you know, well west of, of uh, Salt Lake. So here's that Salt Lake bloom, right? And if we're over here in Wendover, we're standing in a light bloom, but we're looking away from it. Whenever it becomes less later in the season and you go to the southwest, you look right into that bloom and you get blasted out. So looking directly east, we see this bloom of all the life in Salt Lake. But in this distance, it's plenty of distance to give me a chance to make that Milky Way 
shine way higher than the light pollution, and it turns out fantastic. Okay, I can't take too long on that. I hit a lot of the points. We'll go ahead and go on to the next clip. Oh, you know what? The next part of this clip, in fact, choose best foreground. What did I miss? Avoid light pollution. Don't need a filter. Okay, I showed you this map. Blah, blah, blah. And less bloom. Okay, I did cover all that. Sweet. Okay, cool. Clip number three. Yeah, it actually was big too. Before you even worry about clouds, you have to work around the moon. The number one tip is that don't go only at new moon. Check out how this month is going in June 2020. We have nearly the entire month. Everything yellow is a night that you could have at least a few minutes, if not hours, of opportunity to capture the Milky Way without the moon in the way. And this one is February of 2023. There are over two weeks, even in February, that you can capture the Milky Way. So stop thinking new moon means Milky Way. It's pretty much full moon, no Milky Way, and every other night is a possibility. So you have to think in terms of, will the moon be in my way at the beginning of the night, or will the moon be my way at the end of the night, towards the morning? And I want to tell you here two quick things to remember when you're thinking about after new moon and after full moon. After full moon, the moon rises later and later which means here's the sun, it has set, and the moon comes up immediately. Then the next night, the sun sets, and then the moon comes even later. And then the next night, even later. So after a full moon, every night gets better right away after sunset because it takes longer for the moon to rise. If it's after new moon, what you're thinking is, man, that moon is gonna stay in the sky longer. Here's your sun and moon, and they're in the same side of the sky. Let's do it right here. As the sun is setting, the moon is right behind it, but it takes a little longer. During new moon, they're right with each other. After new moon, there's a separation of the sun and the moon, and the moon just takes a little bit longer to set each night. So every night after the new moon, the moon takes longer and longer to set. Lastly, real quick, I wanna point out this video, my moon woo opportunity, window of opportunity, and it shows you a trick, and there's a tip sheet that you can go and sign up for, so you can look at the moon really fast and know, oh yeah, booyah, I know exactly where the moon is gonna be and how much it's gonna take up my night. Thanks again for joining me on a two minute tip. I love you guys for hitting subscribe. I love you guys for hitting like. I really appreciate it. I have my kids right now. We have a little bit of delay in the last two videos, but I'll be coming back with my next video on location planning. Turning check my out Audi the guild. On, check coming out back to Camwood Chat. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So we're talking about the moon and how you don't have to go out on the new moon only. And I want to show you in Planet for Photographers, Planet Pro, a feature that's gonna help you see what I mean very quickly. And so let me jump over to my iPad. I'm already in Planet right now, and I'm looking at planning, as you can see, I'm planning the annular eclipse. I'm like, where do I wanna be for this annular eclipse coming up next October? Not coming up this year, October, but 2023 October, there's an annular eclipse, and I was looking at a subject, and you can see how the, the moon and the sun are right on top of each other. Okay, so that, ignore that let's look down here on this calendar and I like to look at this calendar for many reasons and especially this benefit and I click this button up top here and it's gonna show me the full month and it's gonna show me things that are happening on this month you've got this menu system down below like important dates and then the next one is moon phase calendar and then the next one is considering a moonless night calendar and that's the one you want okay review I opened up my Planet for Photographers or Planet Pro. Let's say that I am just over here, set up my camera location. It actually doesn't matter what camera location you set up, nor does it matter what date you're on. I'm gonna double click this clock or just hit it once and it's gonna go to August 3rd, 2022. And it's gonna tell me some information based on this time right now. Again, from this screen, you go down to the bottom right, click on this little green calendar. You're gonna see this, which is like a quick scroll through all the next events, cool events including, you know, oh, Milky Way core will be this with no moon, and that this meaning that altitude and that azimuth. But it's this part up here on the right that you want, this section right there. Tap that, and then you get into this calendar where you can choose these four different ones. For instance, a Milky Way calendar. Well, this Milky Way calendar is telling me what? On the third, the Milky Way is up for those nights. If I jump back 
months earlier, I start to see three dots. Oh, why is it telling me three dots? What does the 27th have happen? Well, that Milky Way calendar is assessing how good the night is going to be. Well, okay, um, I see three dots in July and two dots in the 20th of July and two dots, but I also see the 13th has no dots. Well, why is the 13th so bad? for Milky Way. We look over here on the moon phase calendar and you'll see that's the full moon. And this moonless nights option here will also reflect that exact same kind of information. It's basically evaluating the evening and saying, you know what, based on the whole evening, it has two sections of the evening that there's no moon, one section of the evening that there's no moon, and then the whole evening has a moon. And so what we want is this Milky Way one or the moon. They're pretty much the same. As you can see, the graphic is roughly telling us the same information, but it's nice and quick over on the Milky Way one to see these dots. You can see them compared to the nights that have the full moon. So say you wanted to plan your August and you're thinking, I want to go out and right now is August 3rd. You can look at this calendar and quickly know, boom, ah, I should go out tonight. It has opportunity. Now that opportunity is evaluated by a certain metric and how do I get that metric to show up? I can't even recall. There you go, you double tap the thing down below. So if I was on the moon and hit it twice, it says moon all night, less than four hours, four to eight hours, or more than eight. If I hit the Milky Way one twice, it opens it up. And you're barely seeing this, so let me just do something real quick. I can get my zoom tool on, but instead, let me just do that and make a new one. And kablamo and also magnify. Oh, you know what, I can't make it bigger. Oh, for the love. Okay, we're gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna go into a new tab. Oh, I wasn't in it. Okay, new. All right, let's just use file, new. I won't use any hotkeys. What is it trying to do? Why is this stuck? probably because I did a hotkey that I flubbed when I was fumbling through there. Clipboard, create, paste, and now I can magnify. All right, I can't see what you're seeing, but oh, now you're seeing it. Okay, cool. So with this in mind, let's go back. Oh, I have so many windows open now. Uh, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and show this graphic underneath this graphic. It's really kind of hard to share the space, isn't it? Um, what if I hit F11? Nope, not responsive. Okay, I just wanted it to be black right here, and then I'll make this even more minimized, and we're just not seeing the 30th and 31st. I can work with that. I can work with that. Okay, awesome. So what's happening here is it's telling us that zero dots is the Milky Way never rises or it always has the moon in the way. If it's less than two hours of Milky Way core without the moon, you'll see one dot, like for instance, the week of the 15th through, I guess, up until the 18th, those four nights in my location, you know, this is basing it off of Carbon County, Wyoming. That's where I just dropped the camera. So that's the one reason why you might consider where to put the camera on the location that you're trying to go. It won't change too much in the Northern Hemisphere, but if you change it extremely north and south and latitude line, you're gonna see a different noun of dots because you'll have more than two hours perhaps, where before you only had less than two hours just because of the different time zone. So looking at it right now, it's saying from Carbon County, Wyoming, that the best week is the first week and it's most of it but then a full week, a full week of greatness is from the 19th all the way to the 31st. So realistically, any time after the 19th and 31st, you're going to have more than two hours of Milky Way. And that third one was more than four hours of Milky Way core without moon. So as you go later in the year, this is going to become less and less. Look at how it happens in September. We only got one dot and two dots. And then October is only one dot. And, uh, and November flat out, you can't even see it. And that's one thing that's frustrating about November here across the board. I can't go to Oregon coast like I like to do and do a Milky Way off of November's because the week that the core is still visible above the horizon is the week that the moon is here. 
if I get rid of Photoshop, let's just minimize it now that I made that bigger, and I hit the moon phase, you'll see that the moon is going towards a full moon and it happens to be overlapping that first part of the night and overlapping that entire window where you'll see the core. And so if you want a quick access, you know, kind of like my almanac, you go right here, click that button, and you can see what months are what. So if you start looking at August again and thinking about going out, you want to go out anytime after the 19th, and you'll have a wonderful two hours of Milky Way core without moon. Hope that makes sense. Faster, give me a thumbs up. He's doing this from podcast mode in the car. And play, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I already said hi to all those. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. So, all right. Tackled that, I think crazy enough. So what else was in that video about moon? I think this is enough. I think this covered everything about getting away from that moon. So let's go to clip four. How are we doing on time? Sweet. Aaron's ahead of schedule. Okay, you've decided where to go. You've decided that the moon's out of your way, but now you got to get rid of those danged clouds. Which hour should you go and will it work? Here are the two websites that I use to check to see if clouds are going to ruin my Milky Way. Number one, cleardarksky.com. This site is only available for those of us living in North America, Canada, US, Mexico, and Bahamas. You go to clear sky charts. I'm in Utah. I'm going to go to the list first and show you. Here's a quick way to see everywhere in, in, in Utah and see all the different stations and get the information for their sky charts really fast. So let's go to the map. I was in the salt flats last week, which are over here, and the closest pin is this one in the null. So I'm going to go to the null clear sky chart. Blue squares are good, white squares are cloudy, and you can see that it's breaking it down hour by hour by hour. All of Tuesday, here's all of Wednesday, and part of Thursday. Cleardarksky.com is fantastically accurate and great because of all the stations that are local right there, and that's why I love using it here in North America, but even though I don't have to use option number two, I always add it because working them in together in tandem is a better way to know for sure whether you should go out. Option number two, clearoutside.com is fantastic and it's for everyone else in the rest of the world. You get more than 48 hours. Click on Tuesday, for instance. Green is great and everything else going towards orangish red is bad. Huge benefit of clearoutside.com is that it breaks it down by elevation, high elevation clouds, middle and low. So you're gonna see if there's a low covering coming towards you or maybe you wanna plan a sunrise where you get that early morning glow before the sunrise happens on those high elevation clouds, it's gonna show you right here. You can see total clouds just like we got in clear dark sky, but you're also getting low clouds, medium, and high. Oh, awesome, two o'clock and four o'clock, I'm gonna see an International Space Station fly over. You don't get that information at cleardarksky.com, so it's awesome to work these together and get all that information combined. Thanks guys for watching this video again and coming back. I'm back from the workshops that I was in. I was in Oregon right, and Salt Flats. Right. Shh, 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 I'm too late always on turning that off, so sorry about that. Apologies. Looks like my audio is on. Cool. Hey, Aaron, I'm half hanging out tonight as a cook. Chris Whiting, everybody. Welcome in, Chris. I'm glad you're here. Um, Alan says, I use the Clear Outside app for Android. I also use it on my iPhone. Um, like I was mentioning, it's nice to have more than one witness when you deal with these things. And sometimes, even with multiple witnesses... You still can be skunked, as Rob and I and John found out when we were down in Moab this week. <sighs> we had predictions of totally clear skies after a certain hour, and it was confirmed with clear outside. And even looking at, you know, dark sky, we were finding, oh, that's a pretty good chance. And then it was just monsoon awesomeness. Hmm. Frustrating, but that's rare. When you get skunk like that, that's totally rare. So first off, let's talk about clear dark sky. If you've never been here before, if you're in the northern hemisphere, there's only a few places that you can go. Um, for instance, this is for uh, da, 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 da. okay, Bahamas, Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. And these are using actual stations. And so when you click on the Utah map, it's not showing me. Oh, good ads. I mean, it's getting really busy here, so they're starting to get some more need for ads. Oh, can't I clear this now? Can you go away? Why won't you go away? Okay, that's a pretty good ad that's stuck there blocking our view. So this, this is a map 
full of pins of actual weather stations that are being used to assess this weather, which is why I lean to this first. Dedicated weather stations, first with this information, and I really like how they only predict a short period of time in the future. For instance, we were in Green River, but our important check was something like Canyonlands or Moab just because we wanted to show off the south of us sky. When you look at something like this, you don't want to look at the map that you're standing on. You want to look at the map that is going to be of an area in front of you. For instance, I'm at Goblin Valley State Park. I will check Goblin Valley State Park. But if I'm curious about how the skies are going around, I'll check the other ones. But there's a trick in Clear Dark Sky that actually one of the viewers of the channel showed me for the first time and I thought oh my gosh why have I never clicked that and it, ha it happened years ago but when he showed me and I was so stoked so let's look at Goblin Valley and you can see a quick view of just the clouds and the transparency but let's go in and see the full detail not just the top two rows but everything and holy ads I, I need to support them if they have an option but this is what you see and this data can be a little confusing let me try and not overlap the chat as much and let me zoom back a bit and then scroll this over. I think we got it for the most part. So you can see how it goes from right now, Wednesday, starting at 10 a.m. this morning through Thursday and Friday and then into Saturday. So we basically have 48 hours of prediction. And so when I have people who come with me to workshops, I tell them that I won't know for sure until about the day before because that's when I'm really confident. A map like this or an outcome on this prediction like this, I don't have as much concern because look, it's just saying, totally open for the whole day and night I wish that was Monday night gosh and so looking at this Friday it's getting bad towards the morning so Thursday night wouldn't be as great even though it's been great all day long once zero hour midnight to Friday morning starts it's gonna be bad and so when you think well how bad it's been so clear what happened and that's where the trick comes in and it only works when you're working with it from a browser whether on your phone a browser version of this or you're right here with your mouse and you click on the square cloud covers the top row click on the square and that square will show you how it gets its graphic and its data I'm like oh wow look at that that's most of Utah covered in clouds and we are getting a cloud so I would look at that and go maybe that clouds further back than it thinks maybe it's further forward than it thinks there's a gap there that I can trust well why was seven o'clock so clear let's check it out ah it was so clear because that whole section right there is <laughs> these animations for the ads they're terrible um, this right here is a nice section of clear sky and that is what it's looking at you can see how it has a reticle right here and that reticle is basically saying hey we're grabbing these like 12, 30 pixels right there. And based on them, we're going to give you a color on this track. And on this track, you get exactly a blue or gradient up to white. And you can see on the side, no, you see it down below. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see some more ads. Um, information right here, 90% covered cloud all the way down to clear. And that is what is going on on Clear Dark Sky. And they use this information with all the other ones. Now, Clear Outside, I showed you a little bit more. I won't go into too much detail here. But one thing I'll bring, bring out is that there is an International Space Station Passover. So if you have a flyover of the International Space Station happening, you can see that. For right now, Wednesday, there won't be. But what if I went out Saturday? No. Friday, no, Thursday, oh man, there's some rain, but there's also the International Space Station flyover. And as you can see, there's nothing on the low clouds, but there are 100% coverage, most likely, of the sky with high clouds. So that blocks my International Space Station. It also means that I'll probably have a terrific sunset because the clouds are high and the sun will get underneath it and could give me a great sunset. But in this case, I won't see the International Space Station fly over. So I love that I compare these together. So if I were to go to Moab, Utah, like I had over on Clear Dark Sky, and see Thursday night, right? We saw Thursday night was bad after midnight. Well, going forward, got it, okay. Going forward in time, let's do Friday, let's do Friday morning starting at midnight. Um, this is Friday at midnight, okay. I can see why they're saying 100% at midnight, but it's saying it's going clear Friday morning early. Interesting. So clear outside is saying it's bad leading up to. 
Um, man, I need to make sure I'm seeing everything I am. I'll go right and left. I'm seeing all the hours. So it's prediction for Moab. Oh, you know, that's Moab. I didn't do Goblin Valley. The thing about Clear Outside is that I can't do Goblin Valley State Park. I won't do the weather stations. It's just going to do real cities and give its best prediction based off of the data. So off of Hanksville information, what is Thursday looking like? It shows it's bad during the night. Interesting. You know, Wednesday to Thursday shows really bad. Where at Goblin Valley, Wednesday to Thursday is totally golden. So that is a discrepancy between the two. So I need a third witness to find out which one will prevail. And I'm going to mention one that I rarely mention, and it's Astrospheric. It's one that I've only recently been, been turned on to. It's got quite a lot of information. The cloud covers the top row. Transparency and seeing are the others. And it has specifically um, all the same kind of squares showing up. And let's see, it's on Provo. What if I click over here, move myself to say Green River, Moab area, Hanksville. Let's just let's just do this area. And I'm going to get the new forecast for that location. And now it's showing me Wednesday to Thursday night. It has what Clear Outside is saying is happening Wednesday. Where, or I should say Thursday. Oh, you know what? In Thursday, it's totally clear in this area where on clear outside, it's showing high cloud cover. In Goblin Valley, it's showing that it's fine. So I shouldn't say Goblin Valley. I should say clear dark sky and astrospheric are confirming with each other that they think Thursday is all clear. But something happens at midnight where to Friday morning, it gets hairy. Clear outside, it's Friday morning is really open. So there's something happening at Hanksville, U.S., here in Utah, on clear outside that is not agreeing with Goblin Valley State Park and Astrospheric. So you've got to use these three together and try and confirm. Another one that if you're on location is terrific is Dark Sky. You have to be on location. Well, you can always look, but it's greater when you're on location. And you have to have an iPhone or iOS app. So let me show you. Right here is the Clear Dark Sky app icon. And if you have an iPhone or iOS, you can use this because iOS purchased it. So now it's not available for everyone. But this will tell me the location here in Provo. I can go up here to the magnifying glass, change my location to say um, Hanksville. And it's only going to give me today. There's no predictions for the future, just some weather predictions. But when it comes to these hour breakdowns, it's only saying now till 5 p.m. tomorrow. So I can see it's right now partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, partly cloudy, clear. And so right now I would not think about going out for Milky Way in this area whatsoever based off a of clear dark skies prediction or a dark skies prediction. If I were to look at... Um, clear dark sky for Goblin Valley today. It says it'd be fine tonight. Um, okay, let's go here. Here it says terrible. Here it says fine. Astrospheric for, mm, let's try, let's try a new location. Let's click on this map again. I want to move this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and get some finer detail. All right, I'm going to change my layers of satellite so I can read it. Because look, here's Factory Butte. Let's go over from Factory Butte and go into Goblin Valley, which is going to be up here. And have I gone too far or not far enough? There he is, not far enough. Okay, so Goblin Valley. I'm over Goblin Valley for sure. I'm going to get a new forecast for Goblin Valley. Hanksville, Goblin Valley, roughly the same thing, and on clear outside, and then Goblin Valley State Park for clear dark sky. Astrospheric says tonight, oh, it's starting from 5 p.m. It's saying it is cloudy up until about 10. So while the Goblin Valley here is pretty optimistic, let's see, what does it say at 10 o'clock? These clouds on clear dark skies prediction have not moved in the way, but on Astrospheric, they have. And on clear outside, um, am I doing Hanksville? What am I doing? Yeah, I'm doing Hanksville Wednesday. And on clear outside, this is last. No, this is current time right now. 
It has. So I'm getting witnesses that it's cloudy and dark sky. That was the other one. Dark sky over here saying it's cloudy. So I have a lot of reasons to think it won't work tonight. And so you kind of balance these against each other. When you get a prediction that has at least three saying it's clear or even two, I would go if it's not inconvenient because who knows what will happen, especially when the prediction of that sky is showing this kind of sky. If you're seeing what's in Nevada, most likely you're going to have some gaps, but you're going to be pretty covered. If you have this kind of an opening in Utah, it's a huge opportunity for it to turn great. Or let's say I zoom into Oregon, you can see how it's way open, but on the coast, it's all blocked in. Brookings is open, but not up here towards Yahats and towards uh, Cannon Beach. Okay, so dealing with clouds is a challenge. It's taking a lot of witnesses and comparing their data against each other so that you can get that information correct and go and know that you should go. All right, um, do you know if the Clear Dark Sky is available on Android? Uh, Clear Dark Sky is a website, so it's absolutely available. What I have on my phone is a separate app called My CSC which oh, I do have a graphic of it, but I won't show you right now, but you can kind of see it there in the top right corner, My CSC, and that is just its own app. There's iCSC and My CSC. There's all sorts of them that just basically let you assign a few clear dark sky locations, and it'll load those up for you when you need them. So I use this when I'm on location with workshops. I'll set up one of these. Okay, I'm in Oregon. Brookings would be great tonight. Goblin Valley is bad. Boulder's bad. And Boulder I use for Escalante. And so this will use the clear dark sky features here on a quick view. And say I wanted to look at Boulder and see what's going on. I have a detailed chart that I can open up that has, you know, what I was just showing you on clear dark sky. All right, cool. It got focused and now I pulled it away. Oh, well. So that is how I work with my phone and typically on my phone I'll just look at clear outside, clear dark sky, and dark sky. I don't use astrospheric much yet, but astrospheric is pretty terrific and pretty powerful. All right, okay, cool. Astrospheric is the app that I use most of the time. Jerry can witness that astrospheric is great. John Deal, any stars on Sunday night for you and Rob? No, John, nope. Um, Rob just took a time lapse. And actually, I went on my way. He was like, you know what? Just go ahead, and I'm going to do this time lapse tonight. It's going to be of clouds, and you don't have to hang out here. And I came home and saw my parents and saw my mom for, mother, for her birthday. So I did that instead, John. All right. Uh, do, 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 do I didn't miss any other comments. Any other comments that are over here, remember, hit me with all caps. So we watched all four videos, right? Because the last one was this, was clouds. Sweet. And it's 749 we're a little ahead of schedule, which is perfect because I have one more thing that I want to do, and I'm going to do it right now in the background while I tackle um, mm -mm, tackle any questions that might come in from today's newbie stuff. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to do the drawing for those that entered in for the Spencer's Camera swag. This is a Spencer's Camera video. Uh, t-shirt and this is just one example of gray I'm gonna whoever wins it is gonna get a pink green or gray one of their choice and their size so these are actually glow-in-the-dark prints so that is a comfortable shirt a little snug on me but you might have plenty of room in your shirt so soup Suk Photography Adventures. I love the name. Joined late. Thanks for the info on the apps you use. Yeah, you bet. Awesome. Uh, Chris Whiting. Clear Dark Sky seems to be the most accurate predictions. I agree with Chris. I trust it more than any when I only check one. But I always check the other ones just in case when I have other people with me. But when I'm going... My, I'm convinced to go by Clear Dark Sky usually. Um, Commander Riker, what exactly do you guys do on workshops? Well, that is a question I'll answer here with a segue where I'm going to talk about a new workshop that I'm adding. I'm adding a couple more. And for those of you who are on the email list, you're going to see an email about it here right after the live stream. I have to finish writing it up. But basically, it's going to be a quick one-day sale to join into it if you'd like to. As I like to do these one-day sales to let people who can't really afford a full workshop have an opportunity to get a nice affordable price but then it's closed off and then I can still make the you know workshop revenue that I'm expecting and everyone can come in the future and it all works out in the end it's a win-win for everybody but it's a one-day opportunity to get it at a nice affordable price so what I'm typing on in the background are all the winners I got Ron in there you know I put Ron's last name but I don't think I need to let me just go ahead and edit that 
Can I edit that? Edit. Okay, cool. I'm going to take off his last name because I don't think there's another Ron in here to compete with. Ron and Kathy and um, Mark. And it looks like John D, John Deal, and Chad. I think that's everyone who tried. Chad, John, Mark, Kathy, Jeff, and Ron. Ron, Jeff, Kathy, Mark, John, and Chad. Okay, cool. So as you are my witnesses to keep me fair, here are those who have signed up. Let me go to the iPad over here. And this is the list. These are the people who followed through with sending me a question on Milky Way, um, Milky Way Wednesday at gmail.com and asked a good question that I'll be answering during one of the live streams. And it looks like Chad, John, Mark, Kathy, Jeff, or Ron. I'm going to give away two shirts. And let's see who are the winners. So I'm going to click the play button. You can see everyone's on here. And I hit play. And all I have to do is I think just tap the question mark. If I tap the hat. Okay, tap the question mark. And oh, Kathy, you win one of the shirts. We're going to get it for you at the uh, September workshop that you're coming down for. And I'll bring it to you. Just need to get a size that you would like it to be. And the other winner is Jeff. All right, Jeffrey S. Okay, I won't say your last name, Jeff, but hey, welcome in for the win. Looks like, oh, Jeff, you're too nice. I don't want to read your full email because it's just complimenting me, but he's saying that his question will be, I bought my first Star Tracker, and I have to admit, this is very addicting. I subscribe to your channel, and I really appreciate all the info, all the educate. Oh, he's still complimenting me. Skip, 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 skip. Very addicting. Okay, sweet. Awesome. So we got a Star Tracker question. You know, it's kind of not really a question there, Jeff, but I'm going to go ahead and make one from it so that you can still get a shirt. And Kathy asks, if you were in a higher light pollution area, not super bright like like by me here in Chicago, but more of an orange area, would it be best to shoot a lot of single shots of the Milky Way and stack to try to get some Milky Way detail? Um, you know what? I'm going to tackle that one, answering it the way that Royce Bear handled some smoke that we had. So Jeff and Kathy, you are the winners. Let me make a note of that right now before I forget. And I'm going to go back over here to the chat room. Uh, ba -bum -bum -ba -bum -bum. Logging into my phone and setting my note right now. So winners of Spencer Camera. So Spencer Camera, if you don't already know, Spencer creates or modifies Astro Cam Okay, let me say this correctly. He'll take your camera and modify it to be an astrophotographer camera. Basically, he puts an astro mod on it like an H-alpha filter or he removes the... I'm not saying this well, Spencer. Sorry. Clarence, I need to say this better. So he removes the IR filter and all the cases and then makes it possible so that you get more light and more of the infrared spectrum there's two different there's a full spectrum mod and there's also an H alpha mod and I'm gonna get from him an H alpha mod so that it's mostly all the information and data that I want like in you know in Spencer in Spencer in uh, Chris Whiting's image uh, where do I have that I have that right here Chris Whiting's image that you saw on this page right there. With an astro modded camera, you can get all that red nebulosity and color detail that you don't see typically. And so this is terrific, and I can't wait to get one. And so Spencer's camera, he's here in Utah, and he has these shirts to give away, and I'm helping him do it. So Kathy won and Jeff won. All right, awesome. So Kathy and Jeff um, I'm going to have to contact you through the email and ask you for the size, and then you respond back to me. Let me know what size and color you want, and we'll get it to you as fast as possible. Kathy, I'll give it to you in September. And Chris is like, not me. Yeah, did I say Chris Whiting? I meant Chris Woodruff. Sorry, I get the Chris W's mixed up sometimes. Thomas, Northern Illinois is a tough area to shoot. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, Mike, I didn't say hi to Mike yet. I remember seeing him on here, but I forgot to say hi. Hey, Mike, welcome in. I saw you came in a long time ago. Wendy provides a comparison of five to six models. You know, that's a good point. We should pull up the Wendy app just for, you know, shit sake of including it as I use it as well and I used it my entire time when I was working out there in the Faroe Islands so let's go ahead and show that windy oh okay yeah I already got windy premium but 
um, this is showing me southern Utah. And right now it just shows me cloud cover and it's showing me the wind. If I had this turned up to the basic settings, it would be giving me just wind. And if you open up for the first time, you'll see this color score to show you, you know, blue is very mild, green is getting more and more violent, and then up there towards the orange and red, it's where it's really windy. In fact, looking at Iceland and Faroes, there typically is a bit of a wind going on. So there's the Faroe Islands, and we can see kind of a prediction for how the wind is going to go. So once I have this here, I tap the down arrow, and it'll take me through the predictions for the nights. But also, if I say, let's say I go ahead and get out of this wind prediction, and I want to go see clouds. Clouds is going to put a clock on here. Actually, I'm not even seeing the clock. Where is my clock? Close that. Oh, I see, because that was open. It wasn't showing me the clock. So down here, it's going to show me how time frame is working, and I can scrub through this and see predictions as clouds and rain come through the area. And you can see the time down at the bottom. I really love Windy for knowing if it's going to be raining or clouding. I found in Faroe Islands that it would give me this kind of an opening, and I would go and find out that it wasn't as clear as I had hoped. And so the best thing I did was pay for the premium and get a radar and satellite view and the satellite view gives you about four hours of resolution let's zoom out and just see the clouds because sometimes after a certain time the Faroe satellite can be wonky but the satellite view over here and I don't think I'm gonna get more prediction let's see I think I will get at least two hours because it's recognizing that I own Premiere now. See that weird line that's happening up top? That happens every evening, and throughout the middle of the night, it does that weirdly. But if I go back over here to the States, it doesn't appear to happen. But these are the clouds right now on the radar, and it's going to update and show me the last two hours up until now. And I can change that to six hours or 12 hours. So Windy App is fantastic when it comes to seeing the current weather and following the patterns. When we were out in Oregon, with Mike that one week with Alan Wallace he was looking at one little cloud that was coming towards Brookings and it was predicted on Windy to come and I'm like bah that won't happen and it totally happened Windy was way too accurate for my taste that that night so we got an all caps can we buy the shirts from Spencer's you know I haven't found out if you can Tom so let me talk to him and find out if he would want to actually sell them because he might just want to give them away as you know marketing swag that's a cool shirt, and I don't see it on their site. Oh, dang. Yeah, I don't think he's have it up yet, but he may do so. And so I'll let him know that there's some interest for it to be on. It's got the Breaking Bad kind of font and everything, and it's an Element SC, and it has the latitude lines and longitude line of his store. So fantastic shirt, really soft, really comfortable, and Kathy and Jeff are getting it. Cool. So we're at the very end. Um, do, 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 do. I did say that I was going to show some Faroe stuff before it was over. And let's see if I can do that without showing too many personal things. I have a bunch of pictures on here that I don't need to share. But I do want to show off my time lapses that show off the Faroes. And I think I will do that. So this is from Kathy and I's um, morning. Oh, you know what? This moved again. Go on over here. This is from our sunrise, the one sunrise. Sorry, um, Fred, Daryl, and Rob, or not Rob, uh, Mark. We did not have a good sunrise like this, but Kathy and I got to go out and enjoy it, and here you go. It's going to take a second to load. Oh, there it goes. It's underneath our text. So this isn't Milky Way stuff. The end of Milky Way Wednesday is now, and I'm just kind of hanging out with friends and showing the Faroe Islands a little bit. And as the sun rose over the city of Jaikf, it was bringing the light across the grasses, and the sheep start to light up, and it's quite fantastic. And you can see how that sun is coming up at such an angle. It's so unique how it never really quite goes down below the horizon much in the summer. It's not as bad as Iceland, but we were getting nautical twilight. So let's see. Here is the full. Oh, it doesn't have quite the. Oh, there it goes. It's not showing me on my iPad, but you can see the motion of it. It's not just straight up. It's completely at an angle. But then once it is up, the sheep come around with a nice golden glow. And this was one of our best days of just clouds doing cool lines really interesting peat you know spikes and uh 
not necessarily color, but it gave us a dramatic, you know, what am I trying to say? Uh, da, 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 da. I actually am still tired enough. After an hour of talking, I'm starting to lose it. The um, what is it, Kathy? What am I forgetting? The really neat light columns that come off, uh, and are shown here. But you know, in the time lapse, they got their best. But a picture would have shown them really well. You know the. <sighs> Sun rays. I really wanted to go back, Rhonda says, but the recent move in home renovations, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, although, if you do go to my website, in fact, let me get out of this because it's not all about this. Let's talk about the let's talk about the workshop that I'm adding. So, if you go to my website and let's take Astrospheric and steal that and go to workshops.photogadventures.com. You can see that I'm actually adding in here. In fact, if you guys want to join me, I only have one person so far coming to Goblin Valley, Factory View, and Hoodoo Village. Doug and I will have a blast alone, but if you want to come to a nice, small, intimate workshop, sign up here. You click on this, and you can see the information for the location and the dates, and the dates are from August 23rd through the 27th. There's four nights of Milky Way photography, and we're going to all of these locations and it is going to be terrific. Maybe just Doug and I, terrific. But if you want to join, get in there and join up. And then there's also two remaining on my no driving, no hiking, early nights Milky Way workshop where Kathy and John will be joining me plus Lindsay. And basically it is a easygoing four locations that when you arrive, you're there. Edge of the Goosenecks, Edge of Muley Point edge of Wedge Overlook Canyon and a secret location, a secret location that I drive you right up to very quick to get to. Here's the workshop offerings for next year, but I'm adding an Escalante workshop. I've never done an Escalante workshop in June, and I'm going to do one where we can have an opportunity for Panorama one more time. So right before the Oregon Coast Crater Lake workshop will be an Escalante one. And then for the first time ever, I am going to do I am going to do a Southern Utah workshop that seven nights. And the reason why I'm doing seven nights is because it's in March, which has an opportunity for inclement weather. But it also has an opportunity for moments like this. Oh, it didn't load up on this page. This. <laughs> this was taken on March 2019. And this right here happened after hours of waiting for clouds to move, but then they moved. And boy, was it amazing. I just loved it. And it's one of my favorite images I've ever captured. And this point right here, we will be at in that March workshop. And it's going to be seven nights. And yeah, okay, you're thinking, Aaron, your workshop is already 1800 for a four-night workshop. How expensive is this going to be? Because I just, I don't know if I can put in $3,000. Well, what I'm doing because it's a longer workshop and during March that it might be bad weather, I'm actually only going to raise it 200 bucks. I'm just going to put on 200 extra dollars, $2,000 total, and we'll have seven nights because it's going to have some inclement nights. And we're going to go to all three of these locations, Green River, Moab, Hurricane, and um, Kanab. We're going to be in all four of those locations. Lots of driving. You'll drive yourself. We have some hiking involved, but not many places require that much walking around. So we're going to have some fun at Factory Butte and Goblin Valley. We're going to have fun at um, Milky Way Butte, Royce Bear Milky Way Butte. It's March. It works out great at that time. We're going to be in uh, Hoodoo Village just outside of Zion National Park. And then we're also going to go to on fifth night. It would be a night of Toadstool Hoodoo near Kanab. I'm missing a couple. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Island in the Sky in Canyonlands, as well as, crazy enough, unless weather forces us not to, I'm actually going to do Mesa Arch. I'm going to do a Mesa Arch Milky Way and Sunrise all in the same workshop because it's going to happen to be late enough in the morning that we'll be out there anyway. We'll be one of the first ones even there, and we'll be capturing a Milky Way over Mesa Arch. And I have never done it yet, and I've been wanting to do it. And in March, it'll be low enough to get a pano up and over it, and it'll be fun to do. Now, it won't be a pano where you see Mesa Arch and it goes up and over it. I'll talk about that in another video tomorrow because I'm going to talk about that one-day sale. But it's going to 
to be a Milky Way core nice and strong over what is Mesa Arch. That'd be cool. It's not going to be as cool, kind of, in my opinion, as this, but it's going to be an opportunity to play around in Canyonlands and Island in the Sky where we don't often get a chance. And my iPad moved. I don't want that in there. All right, cool. All right, so told you about that seven-night workshop. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let me just show you guys quickly the other ones. So I was just writing this up today. So this is my handwriting, and it looks like, because you can't see it, um, 2023 workshops adding 10 slots for the seven-night workshop. So I didn't add the equivalent of what four nights plus three more nights would be because, one, I'm adding two more slots, so there are two more people with us, as well as inclement weather. We're doing seven nights just to make sure from Monday to Monday we're going to be out traveling and enjoying. So it's the longest southern Utah Milky Way workshop I've ever done, and it's going to give us a chance to have some great weather opportunities among seeing some beautiful locations. So then we also have the Escalante workshop, June 12th to the 16th. It's going to be $1,800 for four nights, three people only, as you drive in my vehicle to all three locations, all four locations for the workshop. And then I have my Nightscaper workshops planned. I'm going to be getting the permit for North Rim and doing a North Rim night on the 19th and 20th. So if you're coming to the 2023 a Nightscaper conference and you want to come out with me on a night, I'm going to do North Rim for two nights. I come from my other workshop and then on the 21st I have to go to my next workshop so I only have time for two nights to do workshop the 19th and 20th and there are 10 slots for each one. So for my one day sale I'm going to put down on the March workshop, the June workshop, those will only be a thousand dollars to sign up for them so you can get a thousand dollars only for a seven night workshop. It's the best deal I've ever offered and it's only for 24 hours so check out for that if you want to join me and do that seven nights then the big one uh, then the other one i haven't mentioned yet is the 250 instead of 250 it'll just be 200 i can't go like 150 or something it's already a small price for a one night so just uh come out with me and uh, north rim if you want to sign up now before come getting closer to nightscaper conference and that one day sale you can get that for 200 bucks so all right talked about the workshops thomas tarner can we bring a guest like a wife that is into photography yes thomas yes you can i have always been cool with that in my workshops because they're not doing anything that costs me any sort of instruction time they're not in the way at all and everyone drives themselves and so you bringing a significant other along with you is completely permitted as long as they don't have a camera and getting pictures if they are i want them to be part of the milky way workshop but if they're not yeah, you can just carry your bag and be a buddy out there. We've had many wives and husbands that have come along with workshop attendees, and it doesn't bother me one bit. It doesn't cost a cent. Just you pay for your workshop attendance, and uh, they can come along. No problem. would love to have her. So then anything else? No, we are done. I'm not seeing any new questions come in. So Milky Way Wednesday aficionados, uh, regulars, I kept this light yellow after seeing how it looked in my other one, but I think I may have been too bright tonight. Am I, am I washing myself out too much? Maybe it's beneficial for my skin. Looks good. But Kathy, those of you, Rhonda, that have been watching these videos for so long, John, if you're still around, I mean, does it look better with this light? Jerry's been here all the time. Should I have gone with my more white light like I've done in the past, or is this yellow light kind of good? I, I just kind of like it with the little sepia tone look, but I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Most of the YouTubers like to put a blue light behind them, and that is kind of the fad right now, and I love blue lights. I like the idea of it, but I don't know. I just feel like in this classroom environment, having a normal lights are, are, are good, but maybe I should jump in because in all reality, that spot behind me would look that much neater with just like a completely contrasting color. That's awesome. A little bit too yellow, Thomas says. Okay, one vote for a little too yellow. I'll have to figure it out. I want to make my whole change here. i got to figure that out. Anyway, I'm just jabbering. I'm just hanging out with you now live to see if any other questions come through. Rhonda's like, meh. <laughs> nah, kind of bright for me. It is feeling a little bit more bright than it started. So I think I need to turn down. I mean, the brightness might just be the ISO up here. We're about 640. Same color, but 640. That's a lot less bright. I'm not as blown out. You can see the details of my flawed face. Commander Riker the Monkey Man says, we'll send, me, we'll send me a message if you want to play some games. I definitely do. Oh, Nihar says, how was your trip? 
Faroe Islands was amazing. Oregon coast was blast. We had a couple inclement nights in the second week workshop in Oregon. Michael was there. Mike experienced it. But then we had just amazing but windy Crater Lake nights. And so it was fantastic two weeks in Oregon. The two-day break between Oregon and Faroe Islands was terrific. I found a great new place that I can't wait to go back, Olmstead Point. Uh, if you've never been there, it has a great little tree on a rock. And it's just gorgeous right outside of Yosemite, or it's technically in Yosemite still. And uh, Alan wanted to go out there, and I was stoked to try it out. Shasta was okay. I mean, Shasta's cool. It's got a mountain. I can do that different ways. Um, but I loved Olmstead Point. I think I actually have a portfolio piece there. If the cracks worked, if my focus stacking of the cracks plus Milky Way turns out, even with my lenses being beat to hell, I, I need to update my lenses. Then we'll see. Um, that's better. The light behind you is a bit too hot, too. Oh, that I can't change. It's funny, too, that it's not even that hot. It's just, it's kind of, I don't know. Maybe I'll go for my my dark blue light behind me or whatever. I don't know. i got to figure out that. A little bright in John's opinion, too. So everyone's agreed that it's a little too bright. I'm coming off too strong, even now, maybe. And so still got to perfect my studio lighting. Looks like I'll have some fun with that over the next couple of weeks. You guys can give me some opinions. All right. So John and Kathy will see you in September. The rest of you, I hope you will take me up on these one-day sales. I do them for you. I know that I'm kind of training everyone to wait for the next one day sale, but I only do them once, except for I guess I did it once. I did it twice that other time. Dang it, I did. I only typically do them once when I open up a new set of workshops. I do a one day sale so friends of mine who haven't been able to make it on an adventure with me can now finally come on an adventure with me, and I love doing it that way. And just one day, it's a quick win-win for everybody. But then it's the full price. So hopefully you'll take advantage of it. Check the email in the group. It's going to be some PayPal links this time. I'm not going to go through the effort of creating the whole website page for it as I want to get this out now so those can sign up. Because I'm curious how many people will take of the 10 slots of that seven-night adventure. And then, you know, Nihar was asking about Faroe Islands. Um, let me just go back here and mention that I have two workshops next year, and this one down here is going to change the dates a little bit. Kathy and I were talking, and Fred and I were talking on the workshop. I just feel like a 10-day Faroe Islands would be really terrific. It will give us another three days to work with the weather where we go from Monday to a Wednesday. But maybe a two-week one would be worth it, too. But it feels like two weeks is too much to ask for people to get off of work. And so I'm thinking just a 10-day September Aurora chasing. There are no puffins, but there are plenty of opportunities. And there's three slots still available for that. And there's only one slot left on this one. Um, if you click on these links, they don't take you anywhere yet because I need to create their page. So that is going to happen. And again, 18 days left before I leave for my next workshop in Southern Utah. Oh, this is 22nd. And he changed that. It's 19 days because it's going to be the 23rd. Doug and I enjoying Southern Utah, Factory Butte, Hood Hoodoo Village. In fact, this picture right here, that silhouette is John himself. This was a great night. I forget what her name was. She just happened to be there in the location. Never have I seen anyone over there except for that night with me and John. So, did you have any stars Sunday night? No, nothing. It was terrible, John. Got nothing out of it, man. We definitely, other John, John Deal, we did not have good weather, and so you didn't miss anything. In fact, John, I have your T-shirt you left in the Airbnb. Got to hook you up with it. You're doing some uh, some uh, housework here, housekeeping now that everyone's still on the live stream. Uh, Nihar, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I wish to join you someday. I'd love to have you, man. That'd be terrific. Uh, we, l I love the Faroe Islands. It becomes like, Kathy was joking that I'm basically her Uber driver, and that's what it kind of turns into, where I, I, help the adventure happen by getting you to all these locations and i typically will do some photography on the Faroe islands workshop but this year my camera ball head got lost um, i got it and my tripod replaced and i have this ball head for my star tracking but i don't have a three-way or multi-directional ball head 
And so I didn't have that, didn't bring anything because I lost it two days before I left and I got to get a new ball head. So, um, oh well, I'll be out shooting next time, but just absolutely love Faroe Islands. And if you come in the summer one, if you fill up that last slot, be prepared to be up late at night. We weren't prepared and we didn't do it that much because of bad weather. But if there was good weather, we would have stayed up until that sunrise again and kind of switched our sleeping schedule. It's kind of crazy, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous area can't say enough about the Faroe Islands and in fact I want to do a dedicated live stream for a Faroe Islands adventure only to help sell these two workshops on top of that talk about it and give people some information about what they can expect and the places and just give me a chance to go on and on about it because I love it love that place all right cool I'm gonna go everybody it's 8 16 we've hung out for a long enough time thank you so much for being with me on Milky Way Wednesday I really appreciate you coming out here and next Wednesday I'll be back for more we'll be talking some more beginner stuff and finishing up the last of the videos as well as going into other topics that have come up through the milky way wednesday at gmail.com email questions so if you have any questions for me you want me to tackle on milky way wednesday just email me at milky way wednesday um, right up here milky way wednesday at gmail.com hit me up there anytime all right Thanks, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see some of you very soon on a workshop, and I'm stoked to get out with any of you that I haven't yet. It'd be awesome to have an adventure, and I'm glad to get out there. So have a good one, and see you all later.